Well, hey, it's Tommy back with you for another module of how to get more out of your breakup than just heartache. And look at you moving through the modules. We are on, this is our module number three, physical fitness. And it's one of my favorite. I like talking about this stuff. I've been doing physical fitness stuff ever since I was a kid. Um, you know, so fitness is really important to me. Um, so we're going to be talking about getting in shape because it's really important. It's important for your psyche. It's important in so many ways for your well-being and for your depression. And I mean, I'm telling you stuff. You probably don't. Um, uh, it's nothing new. You've probably already heard this before. But and you know how good it is, but you know, maybe you're just on the fence about getting started. So hopefully I'm going to be kicking you in the butt and getting you off the couch to get you going and motivated. And if you're already doing this stuff, hey, kudos to you. But I'm going to teach you a few simple strategies to keep you motivated and keep you on track so that you be you can be consistent and um, develop that sort of mindset for staying getting in shape and staying in shape so um, the big picture today is we're going to talk about how to make getting in shape a habit we're going to talk about how to be consistent and the um, something that I always feel very important about is join a gym even if you don't think you can afford it and I, I'm I mean this may mainly um, in the very beginning you want to join a gym because that will help you um, it'll get you going going you'll see results faster by joining a gym eventually what I did is to save money I ended up buying a home gym and my kids had gotten to the point where they were a little older and um, didn't have time and weren't as motivated to go to the gym as they were when they were younger um, so eventually I got a home gym and then just recently I probably for about like 10 years I worked out at home and then um, recently joined another gym um, but that's a whole nother subject so what I want to talk about here are tips for making the mental shift I'm going to give you some of those tips and strategies for staying focused all right so put the bonbons down back away from the bonbons why am I spending a whole chapter um, on a module on physical fitness? Well, to show you that um, that's how I guess I guess I'm sending I'm spending this whole module on it because I feel so I feel fitness is so important in your life. And for me, I was fortunate that it started at an early age. Um, but you know, I wasn't always uh, practicing physical fitness. There were there's been points in my life where I've gotten off the bandwagon of fitness, but overall, um, I would say consistently for the last 22 years of my life, um, fitness has been extremely important to me and a part of my daily routine. So that may not be for everybody, but if you can at least make it part of your life during this phase of your life. I think you'll come out way ahead and on top of your game. And really, this is about staying at the top of your game. So, um, why fitness? Well, when you have nothing else, you'll always have fitness. It's kind of like a degree. Nobody can ever take that away from you. And, you know, if you're fortunate enough to have um, all your capacity, all your faculties about you, um, and you can, there's no excuse for you not to do a fitness routine and get into um, some sort of program, then oh, come on, make the change. Fitness is something that alleviates boredom, makes you feel better, has numerous health benefits, and helps you sleep better. So I don't want to hear, oh, I worked out for 20 minutes and I'm still not sleeping good. I'm talking, get your butt worked out work it off and exhaust yourself i'm telling you you won't be able to even stay awake past eight o'clock and it is um really really rewarding at first you may not believe it, it may not seem so but um listen to me i know what i'm talking about and just trust me have you not trusted me through some of this stuff already? I mean, this is, if, if you've trusted me through nothing else, trust me on this one. Because 
um, everything will improve about your about you, about the way you feel and everything. All right. So again, put the bonbons down. Your time for feeding your depression is over. It stops today. I know what it is to have a bit of a weight problem. I really do. I'm talking from experience here. And if I had a picture, I would show you because I am five foot two. And at my highest, the highest weight I've ever weighed was, are you ready for this drum roll? 172 pounds. Now people who know me might find that hard to believe. But um, in my early 20s, I weighed 172 pounds. I know, fatty bumpo for five foot two. Well, that was me. Um, but I have to give you this caveat. I was actually nine months pregnant. But, you know, the baby was only eight pounds, one ounce when um, he was born. So I really don't have a big excuse other than I put 70 pounds on in 10 months. Um, when I walked, my shorts hiked up my thighs. I wouldn't go anywhere without a glass of juice in my hand. And eating a whole cake was a humorous event to me. I thought it was funny because that I could do it. And I did it uh, often. My husband at the time was disgusted by my weight gain. I was intrigued by it, and um, but I started getting depressed because I couldn't believe eight, every month I was putting eight pounds on um, consistently. I remember trying to shave my legs and wanting to give up on, on the whole experience and just pass on um, my personal hygiene altogether. I mean, taking a shower was pretty difficult, turning around in the shower, all that stuff. So physical fitness was not part of my vernacular at that point. Uh, weighing so much made hygiene difficult. It made movement difficult. It made breathing difficult. Everything seemed more difficult. I mean, that's not an exaggeration either. Four years later, I did the same thing with my second child, but that time I only put on a whopping 67 pounds. Woohoo! Wasn't quite the 72. Five pounds lighter, but after each pregnancy, I eventually got back down to my pre-maternity weight, but it took some work, and when it came off, I felt like a million bucks. People either do one of two things when it comes to food and depression. They either overeat or they don't eat at all, and I, can, I can't really say I was depressed with my pregnancies. And that's what caused me to eat. I think I just didn't feel good unless I was eating. That's pretty much how it went, you know, to get rid of some of the nausea. But when it came to my divorce, I definitely was depressed. I learned that I am the top, I'm the type that stops eating when depressed. So I don't know, do you have a pulse on which one you are? And um, maybe you can, I'll try to make this relate to either one. And um, this can be a real problem, you know, when you, when you don't eat, you feel weak and tired, and when you overeat, same thing, you feel weak and tired, and the depression gets worse. My normal weight, though, just to kind of give you a benchmark, is somewhere around, and I'm not just saying this, but it fluctuates, it's around 112, give or take, um, and depending on the season, right? So during my divorce, I dropped down to... Um, a slight 100 pounds. People started commenting, if you lose any more weight, we're going to call the doctor, Tommy. That's when I decided to change my ways and take hold of this before it took a hold of me. So I started to eat, and once I got over being the victim, I started getting mad. That's when I decided to work out and kick some butt. This was my motivation. I wanted to kick someone's Whose ass? Well, never mind. It doesn't really matter who. I bet you can figure that out. But my point is, um, do or think whatever it takes to get you there mentally. Then use that. In my case, it was anger. So I needed to use my anger and then be consistent. So <clears throat> how do you get to that point? How do you get um, to where you want to to stay consistently mad or whatever it is that you need to be in order to be consistent. How do you get there? You'll get to that point when you look at yourself in the mirror and you see somebody you don't recognize. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. I'm just kind of playing around here. Maybe he's a monkey that you see in the mirror and it's not really you. And you're going, what? What happened? How did this happen? 
<clears throat> but it happens when you least expect it. It's subtle, but you need to act when the urge hits you and get on that bike or go for a run or use that old machine somebody you know was about to toss. My motivation, as I mentioned, was anger. I had the mentality of a boxer prepping for the big fight. Only in my case, there was never a fight. Um, I just made it up in my head, but it was real to me. And I would be ready if anyone ever messed with me or my kids, all 100 pounds of me. I eventually bulked up and started putting on the muscle and the weight. And let me just tell you, the transformation is quicker than you think. But it takes about a month, maybe a month and a half to kick in, you know, to start seeing some sort of improvement. And after that, it's pretty cool. So for the first month, you're really kind of just sleeping better because you're so exhausted. And I think they should package uh, exercise in the endorphins because endorphins should be just prescribed. I mean, they're such an awesome drug. Um, and then, you know, something else amazing happens. The feeling becomes contagious, almost like an addiction, a good addiction. Um, you start working out and you can't get enough of it. And I'm not making this up. If you just stick with the program for just, I'm just saying even, you know, realistically, if you could do it for two, okay, start out with four days, then go to two weeks and, um, you know, as you as you push yourself, okay, do this, you know, for four days a week, do it for two weeks, and then give yourself another goal, keep it up for a month, you know, and just keep tacking it on that way. Um, I'm, I've recently started planking and planking, I don't know if you know, but oh my gosh, the first time I tried it, I could barely do one minute and I just kept tacking on 15 seconds, 10 seconds, on and on. And I think I've been planking now for maybe six or eight months off and on. And I'm up to dun, da, 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 12 minutes. And um, I don't even know if I'm doing it right. I'm probably doing it wrong. That's why I can do it so, for so long. But um, you just do it little by little. And I have on my website, I have a little tickler um, that shows um, how where I'm at. And my goal is 14 minutes. So I'll get there. But, you know, it's week by week, month by month. So that's what you're, that's what you mean we need to strive for here. And so um, just keep working at it. And right now you need to just keep some, something to keep that um, focus on your goal. All right. It helps to have friends that help keep you accountable and work out with you. So that's something I recommend. But it's sort of like school. Remember that friend that, you know, you agreed to take that same class together or the one that nobody wants, that science class that nobody wants to take and you keep putting it off, put it off. Well, then, you know, you agree, well, let's bang it out together. But then at the last minute, your friend drops out of the class and there you are stuck finishing it by yourself because you're not a quitter. And in the end, you do it. And you take the class, you finish it and make new friends in the process. Well, working out is sort of like that. You will outlast a few friends. Let me just say this. Just don't be the one don't be that friend that bails on the goal. Stay focused and um, gather your, your village and get your people behind you. So what if you can't afford a gym membership? Maybe you're, you know, everything's really tight and you're maybe even homeless. Poor guy. Maybe a gym membership seems like a luxury, not a priority for your budget. You don't have to join one immediately. But I would suggest the minute you're feeling like I want to do something about this weight or the way I look or whatever, then, then do it. Go then and go act on that feeling. At first, I couldn't afford a gym membership. And when my parents were getting rid of a, um, one of those, it's, it was a push-pull machine. It was kind of a weird contraption. But it, it kind of worked your core. Um, so they were getting rid of it and so I said hey well can I have it and so I got it I put it in my bedroom and stared at it for about a week or so and then one day the urge hit me and I jumped on it and then the next day I did it and I did it for 20 minutes the next day same thing and then eventually I worked up to 30 minutes and I started doing that when the kids were watching tv or doing whatever and um I did that for about a year or so until a friend talked me into joining a gym and I could budget for it. 
And let me just say that um, when money is tight and you're, you are in frugal mode, you're going to be, if you're like me, you're going to get the most out of your money and you're going to go to that gym and you're going to live at that gym. You're going to eat at that gym. You're going to shower at that gym. You're going to, it's going to be your new home because um, you can save money that way on water. You know, the kids are busy. You're getting your workout in. Everybody's having a good time. I'm just saying. So I had to carve it out of my budget and I wasn't sure about it at first, but then it um, became this really great thing for me and the kids. They loved going there and eventually I made a few friends there. The motivator came um, because of the kids, you know, because um, they liked going. It was it was an incentive for um, them to get their homework done. So if the homework wasn't done by 7 o'clock, we couldn't go. And we were all disappointed, but um, they started doing their homework at daycare. Um, and they did it without a fit because the reward was the gym later that night. And it forced me to go and be consistent. So my kids were kind of my um, my motivator. We usually went two or three times a week, depending on other school functions that were going on. We did this for years. And on my off days at the gym... I would run at work during my lunch hour. So I was, at my, at my office, we have some showers, so that's, it makes it really easy to do. So I've always, for the last 22 years, I've always um, ran at, on my lunch hour. So, um, and then I do the gym workout on top of it. So I was getting in really good shape. So I did, um, I'd get them ready at the gym for bed. We'd shower there. Um, and all we had to do when we got home was pretty much just brush their teeth and climb into bed. So, um, you know, and that was California Family Fitness. That was uh, a gym out here in California that catered to families. And I recommend uh, gyms like that if you have kids. So eventually the kids got sports of their own and weren't as motivated to go to the gym as they got older. But I still was able to fit my workouts in because at that point it had become a habit. So making fitness a priority sends a message, a good one, to your children, too. My my oldest, he's in a nursing school right now with a family of his own, and he still fits time um, out of his day to get a good workout in. So I think that comes from, he, he tells me, Mom, that came from, you know, you making us go to the gym all the time when we were little. So most gyms today make you pay an annual membership, and if um, this is too steep at first, then find one that allows you to go month to month. So yeah, start there, start out slow, and maybe just commit to a gym membership for one month at a time and see how it goes. Then at the end of that month, commit to another month and so on. So um, true story, I used the same strategy on my current husband (laughs) when we were dating. um, He was 40. And um, when we got married, he was 40. And um, we dated for four years. So for the four years we dated, um, he, I guess to say he was a little gun shy in the commitment department was kind of a huge understatement. So he was sort of gun shy at the beginning, the middle, and toward the end of our um, courtship. So, um, I mean, I don't get it. I'm just so sweet and adorable. Why wouldn't he commit to me? So I suggested that um, this is... Um, something my oldest sister um, gave me the tip on. She says, well, have him commit to you for just one month at a time. And then at the end of the month, he gets a get out of jail free card. And then you can evaluate it. And if it goes good, well, then commit to another month and so on and so on. And so it worked. And um, I mean, it wasn't magic and I didn't trick him. It was just pretty much that simple. When I approached him with it, he looked at me and smiled and then he agreed. And the rest was history. Okay, so dream big right now. You're in the middle of reinventing yourself. You can do this. It really isn't that hard. You just have to get off your butt and move more. I mean, seriously, move more. And bonus, your employer, if you're lucky, maybe you have one of those employers who gives you discounts to join a gym because, you you know, you have a sick days, the more fit you are and healthier you are. So ask about that too. Maybe even ask the gym if they have any sort of um, discounts going on. Um, and for the record, by the time I had my third baby, 
um, at the ripe old age of 44. <gasps> Gasp. I know. I'm an old lady. Um, I'll be 60 when he's in high school. Isn't that scary? Anyway, it was for me. I think I cried like two weeks, but that's okay. It's been the best thing ever. Um, so with my third baby, I only gained 29 pounds. Why? Because I took better care of myself at that age and had learned the benefits of exercise. So um, wrapping this up from the toolbox, be consistent, just do it one day, um, just take one day at a time and then um, just um, one day do something, then do that same thing the next day, then do that for four more days in a row and then pretty soon it will become a habit. Get friends to help keep you accountable, lots of them, because you're going to go through lots of different physical fitness friends. Um, some will fade in, fade out. Um, maybe have a friend at the gym or one at work um, that you can do things together. Support each other, tease each other, make bets with each other, um, and finally join a gym. Um, you will get more than your money's worth, and that... Um, the message you send your children will carry over into their lives later, which is hugely important. Okay, so thanks for joining me for this session, and we'll see you in my next video. Take care.